I spent another 100 days in The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. This is a continuation of my last video where I spent 100 days in Tears of the Kingdom. So if you haven't watched that video, probably check that out first as it'll give you some context as to what's happening in this video. Unlike last time, however, this time I've come up with some goals that I want to accomplish. Firstly, I want to complete every dungeon that remains. Second, witness every single vision. Thirdly, acquire and fully upgrade the champion's leathers as well as another mystery set I hope to find. And finally, beat the final boss, the Demon King but I don't know if I can make it there in 100 days. I guess we will find out. So to begin day 101, we start off exactly where we left off with the Master Sword in hand. And what better way to get started than to head into a shrine? This game is just another shrine simulator after all. I like this shrine because I got to blow things. Yep, that's right. But today was a quick day because the first half of the day, I just spent my time testing out the Master Sword. Beginning the next day though, I stumbled my way into a random cave. There were these two dudes banging on about some clothes hidden in the chest in here, but upon further investigation, locating this chest might be a little difficult. They do. Oh! <laughs> well, we just found some pants. Huh, I guess not. What does this say? To, to you who have found my treasure, these ember trousers are but one piece of my grand collection. Huh. <gasps> you have done well to find this, and I will reward you with a hint to another. The Fierce Deity Sword? Thus sparking the quest for the Fierce Deity what? Set, which was the mystery set that I wanted to fully upgrade by the end of the 100 days. Following the hints given to me in the bottle, we head to the Red Crown Citadel, sneak under a crack, and we find a secret cave. <gasps> Color Citadel Ruins. Okay, surely in here, right? Fierce Deity Arm! It has a tack up! The next day, I continued my search for the other pieces, and after jumping into the top of the Skull's Eye, next to where I found the Big Goron Sword previously, we defeat a giant Stalnox and claim the mask. From here we head over to Mount Daphne's and jump inside the stump to find the final piece of the set. Yo, what the heck? That's awesome and it provides permanent attack up? Yo, look at it! That's badass! What the hell? DRIP CHECK! Ow! Oh! I end off my day in yet another shrine and this one was super easy but was fun as we get to traverse across this shrine on vehicles. Beginning the next day, we headed back to the bottle and claimed the Fierce Deity Sword. Sword! Oh, that looks so cool. The Infinity Blade, basically. With this armor and sword, I'll rule the world! Okay, maybe not. From here, I head back out to the outcropping to talk to the pile of poop. I mean, come on, this weird statue thing looks like poop, seriously. Surely I'm not the only one that thinks that. Well, he gives us the first piece of the Dark Link set, which is quite cool, but it also can't be upgraded, so kinda lame. But also tells us a way we can find more poop people in the underground, so off I go to find them. Today I find the first of many, and he offers not just a piece of armor which offers gloom resistance, but can also reforge the big Goron sword that I previously broke. Finding the brethren after this, we can purchase another piece of the Dark Link set, the Pants. Nice. Heading back to the primary poo himself though, we are told to go find more, but I get distracted by Roby who asks me to meet him at his old research facility. Alright, off we go I guess. First thing in the morning we arrive at the lab, and Roby upgrades our Puripad, giving us access to the sensor which can detect nearby shrines, and also unlocks the fast travel medallion, allowing me to place my own waypoint for fast travel whenever I need it. This is super handy. I caught up with the bubble man today and get close to getting those cool ninja pants, but we need way more gems. The shrine I did today was pretty cool. We had to push a ball with an impact and then ride along a minecart. Is it a hole in one? Hole in one, baby. Are you right down here? Emerging from the shrine, I headed over to complete the final fairy fountain quest, making it to the stable where we are told you can hear a flute player at night in a tree, and we find the Pied Piper himself. What are you doing up there, man? That's dangerous. Kids shouldn't be climbing trees. I guess I climb trees. 
That's besides the point. He needs a bunch of fireflies to show off to some kid or something, so we give them to him and in return we unlock the final fairy fountain as day 107 begins. I can't upgrade much right now, so instead I head off to gather materials. So I create a checklist in order to upgrade the Fierce Deity set, Twilight set, and also the Champion's Leathers as I'm going to need plenty of star fragments, a scale, a claw, fang, and horn from every dragon, and two of each of those from the light dragon. And on top of that, we have to defeat a bunch of super tough enemies like Kinox's, Gleox, and Lynox. So I'd say we have our work cut out for us. The rest of the day, I head around to a couple of shrines, and anything involving flying a wing plane anywhere earns plus three points on the shrine rating scale. So I think I'll score this shrine, uh, four links out of five demon kings. That night, I witnessed a vision where all the sages prepared to fight the Demon King. Okay, good luck with that, guys. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that'll work out for you. Today, I played a couple of rounds at this Ding Bell Whack-A-Mole game, but I couldn't get a good score. I'll be back someday soon, and I'll get a high score. Just you watch. I never went back. We ended our day arriving at the Colosseum, inspired by Chat, who thought I was ready to take on the Thunder Gleok lurking within. <laughs> Okay, we took damage from that, but worth it. Okay, he's flying. He did be flying. Okay, we're doing big damage. That's good enough. Okay, I'm, I grossly underestimated the strength of this thing. We got this. Couple of spin to win Beyblades, let it rip, we'll do it. Is that all of it? Oh, it's fallen, baby! Oh, yo, it just took a shit ton of damage from the fall. And now we can let it rip! Let's go! We managed to take down the dragon by morning to receive... Nothing. Well, I guess some dragon parts, but that's kind of disappointing. Following on from that disappointment, I run into the light dragon and get another scale from it. This dragon is special because it's where we found the master sword previously. But not only that, there is some more lore behind it. But to find out what that is, I'll need to go watch a few more visions. So off I went to watch Raru massacre some Molduga as the Demon King's troops advanced. Take this, you! Try me! The morning of our 110th day, I completed another shrine, cheesing it as much as I could. The next shrine I did was pretty dope, as we had to get this big ball across these large gaps, and to do so, I used fusion to roll it along some tracks. Definitely scuffed, <laughs> but it worked. The rest of the day I spent in the Grand Underground. Nope, that's in Pokemon. This place is called the Depths. And barely accomplished anything. You know how it is down here. I tried to find a way to take on Koga today, but couldn't find a way into his small island. Above us was the Rito village, so I thought as I explored the village later, I may find an entrance. But for now, I kept exploring the depths and found a sea boomerang from the Wind Waker. It's a sea breeze boomerang. That's really cool. What the heck? I upgraded my battery size today and went for an adventure in the sky. I completed a shrine while up there which had me deliver the shrine stone to the shrine and inside was a puzzle where I had to slide ice down a hill. Please hit the sign. Hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it. Let's go. The rest of the day I attempted to fly to the top of this huge sky pillar but that was dumb as you get a free teleport there from the bottom but I didn't know that. You stupid! At the top, however, was a diving quest, where we had to jump through all these rings which unlocked a shrine. Doing this also gets you a piece of armor from a special set, but I didn't pick that up until way later because I didn't even know it was there. I completed the shrine in the morning before spotting a dragon to go harass, so we stole its scale from it and stumbled into a cave and gather yet another bubble gem. I then traveled to the Lost Forest and spent a while trying to get to a shrine I could see was nearby, but that was pointless as I kept getting faded out. Leaving the Lost Woods, I decided it was finally time to continue the Rito questline from the previous 100 days. We met this bird and his fam around day 90 and it was finally time to deal with it. So I headed to the top of this giant tornado, launching from boat to boat and finally making it to the top. However, I realized that I left Talon behind somewhere. So back down I go. 
So I spent a full day looking for this kid. I went to where we got his bow back. I went to his tree. I couldn't find him. And I thought for real the game was glitched. So I just decided to go do something else and to come back later when I closed the game and reopened it. I ended up completing more shrines and found my way back to the Great Plateau, speaking to the statue in the old Temple of Time. I am trapped under the water behind the stone gate of the Great Plateau. Wait, what? We figure out that if we drain the water at the base of the plateau, Y'all calling me stupid, but I think I solved it. <laughs> All the fish. <laughs> the fish drowned out. That's funny. It's the poopy poop poop. He said to go back to the statue in the Temple of Time, so I went there, which gave us a longer quest to drop some eyeballs down a hole. Seems like a long quest, so I'll come back to it. I spent the rest of the day searching for Talon again, and after telling chat that he isn't at the waypoint, I go to prove them wrong. The next day we head back up to the Wind Temple, this time with Talon, and complete puzzle after puzzle, spanning multiple days as we traverse frozen gaps, blow wind into these pipes, and activate the doors to the center platform. Open sesame! No! Talon! Oh, why is this bird actually so badass? I love him. Okay, let's go! Yo! Colgera! Bruh! That thing must be what's causing the blizzard! We've got to take it down! Alright, let's do it! Oh, 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 it's trying to attack me with that, but if we get in there, we can hit it. Aha! Oh, we broke through part of it. Okay, I see, I see. I see. It's gone through a freaking portal, man! Yeah! But super easy because you don't actually need good weapons. I wonder though, maybe since it comes up from above, if we shoot a bomb arrow. Oh! Speedrun strats! Oh, we just missed it. Okay, that's fine. Ta -da! Sick boss fight. Actually sick. Freaking awesome music as well. Oh my god, that this whole area was such a vibe. I wasn't feeling it at the start, but as we went through it, man, that was a really, really, really good dungeon slash temple. Once defeating it, we learned the history of the Rita and the sages battle with the Demon King for the third time as Talon gains his sacred stone and passes on his power to us. The Sage of Wind swore to fight by your side until the end. Take this. It's proof that I'm with you. I don't know why this guy is actually so cute. I love him. Hey, we got the next Infinity Stone, baby! Let's go! thus completing the main Rito village quest. But there was plenty more to do here, like find a way into the depths. So after climbing too many of these peaks around Rito village, I eventually found it on the side of a wall. Well, that wasn't obvious at all. Nevertheless, it's time to go take on Koga.
Two big boss fights in one day. All right, let's do it. This time, Koga's in a mech? Okay, can I craft this? I sure hope so. We had to knock him into the fence to stun him and then wail on him with some spin attacks. Get him, guys! Oh, shit. He's breaking out. Let's go! Okay, that was really easy, actually. What the hell? No, oh, oh shit. But Koga had one final uh, plan involving his super special Koga rocket. But I guess things don't go his way. I began today by handing in my blessings for hard upgrades and upgrading my battery. I don't know what was special about today, but it was now that I decided to finally investigate Hyrule Castle. Launching from the cannon, we breached the gloomy defenses of the castle, landing at the shrine in the back. We complete said shrine and head inside. Now, there was a few things that I wanted to find in here. The first being the champion's leathers, that awesome piece of armor that we were wearing all the way back on day one. I also wanted to find the Hylian shield, as well as a bunch of other strong weapons, of course. King in the castle, king in the castle. I have a chair, I have a chair. Inside the main foyer, where once lay a giant pit to go fight Ganon, instead remained just the king's chair and a puzzle to solve. Upon lighting the torches in the castle, a secret chest is revealed behind the chair, and inside it was the very first of our hunted items, the champion's leather. This garment worn by those in good standing with the Hyrule royalty. As the day progressed, we gathered powerful weapon after powerful weapon and found a piece of the royal guard armor. By the end of the day, we found ourselves at their docks and fighting a demon hand. But that despawned as we just kind of stayed far enough away from it. I'm so good. I don't know how people struggle with those creatures. I would never. Down in the docks, we lit yet another flame to reveal... Baby! We of course end our day in a shrine, one step closer to completing our goal. I continued shriding the following day, gathering Korok seeds as I went, and I was told by a comment that I might have missed something at Link's old house, so back I went to find a secret study down in a well. And well, 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 wouldn't you know it, it's our old hairband, so if we want to rock our hair how it was in Breath of the Wild, we can. Cool! I ended my day by dropping a shrine rock into a whirlpool, jumping into said whirlpool, almost drowning, and then completing the shrine. The next day, I went looking for the light dragon, to no success, before eventually stumbling into a fight with one of those construct beings. Defeating it, we found another champion's will, which will allow us to upgrade the power of one of the champions. But I hadn't decided who to upgrade yet. Later that day, I found another memory and Zelda explained to Raru how she saw Ganon back in her time and that she thinks that they will lose this fight. Ending off the day, we go to the Geoglyph, which looked like the Master Sword. And we're told of the journey the Master Sword took when it arrived in Zelda's hands in the past. Day 122 consisted of more visions that were kind of unimportant, to be completely honest, as well as partaking in some general shrine expeditions. But we did stumble upon the Lord of the Mountain, which was pretty neat, I guess. The following day, I found some tablets which alluded to using the Sage's ability to activate certain puzzles in this area. Problem is, I'm still missing a Sage. Surely I'll get on that soon enough. Nope. I did what I could for now, and on day 124, I faced the most difficult challenge so far, the King Gleok. Yeah! Sniped! Y'all see that? What's up, King Gleok? Wait, King Gleok? It's all three types. I may be out of my depth here a little bit. If you thought the Ice Gleok from last video was scary, or the Thunder one from the beginning of this video, just wait. This thing has insane health and also has all three of the damage types, Fire, Ice, and Lightning. Good start, okay. Now I haven't merged every best thing I have together, so I'm just gonna have to go in with what I've the best I can. Oh, this should do a decent amount. Uh! Ah! 
Towards the end of the fight, he flies super high up into the air, and I have no choice but to use recall on the ice shards that he's lowering down to get myself up into the air and ready to attack it. Okay. Oh, big drop! Big drop! All massive damage! Oh, we got this. Spin to win! Come on! Let's go! With the first King Gleok defeated, I made my way back to the Great Plateau to complete the long quest the Poop Man had gave me. We drop his eyes into the holes and take them to place them underground. This quest sucked, as I found out the hard way after painstakingly dropping every eye into the hole, if you fast travel or move too far away, the eye respawns at the top. So I wasted a whole day dropping all these eyes into the ground only to have to go and redrop them all again the following day. I did come across another Yiger hideout today, which after defeating the members inside, earned me the Yiger mask. Dropping all those eyes in again and delivering them to a big poo statue underneath the main goddess statue on the surface earned me a heart piece. I mean, I guess I'll take it. At least it unlocked a couple more items for me to be able to purchase for pose, but was it worth taking up three full days? Uh, I don't know. Today I completed some shrines and took down two giant rock things before watching yet another memory. Finally we see Saria die and evil Zelda sort of explained. You can tell I'm super invested in this. The following day, I made my way to Eventide Island, expecting to lose my items. However, not this time. Instead, we are tasked with taking out all the monsters on the island to get a pirate ship to spawn in the cove. Shit, 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 Well, we defeated him. Good job, us. This wasn't the only challenge waiting for me here, as there was yet another one of Satan's booty holes to explore. Going into it led us into a gauntlet of battles. Okay, looks like we're about to go into some type of uh, crazy battle. Oh, it's like a gauntlet. Okay. I wish the Goron bro actually did more than just swing him sword like... Ugh. Nice shot! Like he's playing Wii Tennis. This better be a good reward. This better be a good reward. Actually kind of cool. Midna's helmet? Okay. Heading out of the hole, taking on the monsters, and then the pirate ship, we gain access to a shrine and some decent weaponry overall. Today I made my way back to Tarrytown, a place I had so much fun in in the last 100 days. We hand in our first Sage's will upgrade, deciding to go with Tullin for his range damage. We also upgraded our health some more and began building the monster display for Kilton. This took a while as I needed to go take pictures of multiple monsters, including Obsidian Flux. It is a big fatty. Come here, you big man. Oh yeah, him doing the big suck is a good is a good picture. The big thing he wanted me to take a picture of today was the King Gleo, which meant heading back to the island I fought it on previously. But doing this earns me the monster saddle for our horse and a diamond for money. Ending the day, I talk to the construction lady and she offers me the deal of a lifetime to build a house. Son and done. Hey, hello, you must be Link. These are the two rooms. The one on the left is a foyer and the one on the right is a bedroom. I better be able to freaking add more rooms on, have a freaking triple story double deluxe house. Indeed I can and indeed I do. Well, technically it's only a double story, but close enough. I mean, the kitchen should probably be downstairs, right? And the armor display, the sword display upstairs next to the bow display. And after a full day of creating my dream home, I got distracted by a dragon before I could properly show it off. Said dragon then led me to the horse fairy fountain, and after thinking about it, I wasn't finished with my house. So back I went to spend a whole nother day perfecting the house. 
Hello everybody, welcome to my epic house design. When you come in, you're greeted with a nice open floor plan living room here. We've got table chairs. You want to say hi to Riley Steed, you can. We've got Riley Steed here. She's a beauty. You come over here. You see my soon-to-be big Goron sword display. My double Hylian... My shield shield. The Hylian shield. We got the Wind Waker Boomerang, the Gloom Sword, and then over here, um, I don't know, I will find something to put here that's cool. But anyway, that's enough of the downstairs. Upstairs, we have something even cooler. And that is where the magic happens, the bedroom. This is where me and Pur me and Zelda get down to business. And then over here, this is where I pray to a statue for some reason and cook my meals. And then over here is, oh, yeah, uh, we probably shouldn't be looking that, at that, but, you know, um, yeah, this is the best room in the house, let's be real. With my house finally built, I headed out after a quick tour and go to the ferry to upgrade my gear and witness another two memories. And that was all of them, or so I thought. After witnessing all the visions, I unlocked a secret final vision. restore the master sword for you. I will care for it until the time comes. I will pour my sacred power into it. It will be the weapon that defeats the Demon King. To become an immortal dragon is to lose oneself. She really became a dragon. I thought that was going to be Raru's sister that turned into a dragon, but you know what? I see it now. Dragon's Tears. Tears of the Kingdom. Get it, guys? And what better way to show Zelda that we finally understand what she's been trying to tell us than by shooting her for a claw. <laughs> Yesterday was pretty full on, so I decided to chill out today with some chill shrine grinding. And in this shrine, I definitely cheated, deciding to use the recall ability to pull the ball to me instead of doing whatever water puzzle this shrine had installed for me. Is it really cheating if I'm just using the mechanics given to me? Yes, it is. Whatever, bro. I then took this man along the river on a boat to get his hoe back to find that crazy flower lady from the first game. I hope he wasn't talking about this lady that he was trying to find. We get some money from Solonge Bowser and end up running into a flame gliok. Shame for him though, since I'd already managed to kill his king. By this point, this dragon was going down easy. Today I stumbled upon a quest to get a giant white stallion. That's what they call my pe- Dude, you can't say that. Okay, it's not true anyway. We find the horse, tame it, and head into a shrine that baffles me for ages. This shrine! What the heck is this shrine? This is so hard! Okay, we, we should probably make it straight. Uh, how do you do this? This puzzle's brutal! Right, right. Oh! Oh, oh. Okay, I'm no longer feeling good about this one. Yeah, this should work. Maybe. 
bem. Okay, we're good. <laughs> I mean, when you think about it, I probably should have figured this out sooner. Fortunately, though, time doesn't progress in the shrine, so even though I'm a dummy, we don't waste any in-game time. Let's go! We completed a shrine in the dark today and infiltrated a yet another Yiga hideout. You fat bitch. But didn't pick up the boots inside because I couldn't find them, so I'd end up coming back later. I made a short trip to Hyrule Castle and later found a Lionel to battle. These things are still no joke. Little did I know, I had an underground coliseum filled with them to battle in the future. For now though, I had my hands full. I was trying to mount. Oh, there we go. Ah! Get him, guys! Hit him! God damn it! Oh my god. Well, that was extremely scuffed and we wasted all of our fairies that we collected, but I guess it's worth it, right? I ended my day heading towards Garuda Town, stopping off at a stable and completing a shrine along the way. In the morning, I left the stable and headed into the desert itself. I ended up in a quicksand pit, finding myself in the Kara Kara Bazaar, where I acquired a new headband to give me heat resist and also to look pretty damn sexy. Arriving in actual Gerudo Town in the morning, I find it's been taken over by Gibdos, an enemy absent from Breath of the Wild but found in a lot of other Zelda games. I really like its design in this game though. We find a staircase leading down underneath the town but no way to get inside, so I look around and eventually find a way to drop down into the underground bunker, where we were about to get kicked out but we're allowed to stay as we run into Bulliara, Princess Riju's bodyguard, who we knew from from the previous game. She lets us know that Riju is off in the desert practicing her thunderclap, so we look around the bunker before finding a statue to turn in our many blessings. I found a secret exit which led me into a secret shop where I bought the rest of the sand set for full heat resist. The next day I found Riju training and damn! You missed. What's up? <laughs> it's it's me. Whoa, it's me. Damn. This changes things. I didn't expect to see you here. Okay. Okay. Hello, Riju. What the heck? Glow up. We train with her and learn to fire lightning. We head to the bazaar later and find it being taken over by Gibdos. But with Riju's help, we managed to take down a bunch of Gibdos with the power of lightning. Heading back to the town itself oh, today, cool. we prepared some defenses and sent troops to different sides of the town. We're preparing for a Gibdo invasion and Riju and I have some work to do. Thankfully, we were able to work together and wombo combo these Gibdo towers. Right, down. There we go, there we go. Whoa! Why are they running like crazy men? Huzzah! With the town now saved, I listen to some love seminar and find another underground cave to explore. Later in the day though, it was time to find the temple. And to do so, we needed to raise these towers and direct beams of light to form a triangle. Triangle. Triforce. Nope. This raises the temple and surprisingly we encounter the boss right away. I do not like that. That is demonic. Ew, gross. What the actual heck? It must be responsible for all this. Come on. Let's take it. What? Okay. We're just going straight into it. Alright, I'm I'm here for it. Yo, that thing is creepy as hell. Get lightning strike though! Okay, okay, we did damage. Is it gonna run off? Yep! I guess we still have to do the dungeon. Making our way inside with the goddess that is Riju, the temple's puzzles revolve around sending light beams around the temple, directing the lights to special pillars where we can then hit it with the thunderclap. This powers a lift to the top of the temple, and with that, we can take on Queen Gibdo again. You ain't running from me this time, baby. Queen Gibdo. Let's go. We'll 
finish it off here and now. Oh yeah, baby. We indeed will. Let me zap its ass. Zah! Zap! Wait, he got all its health back. He healed up that pesky bugger. Oh, 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 now we spin on it. Spin, 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 spin. Hit the head, hit the head. Okay, the head does nothing. Okay. All good, we just deal as much damage as we can. Okay, we'll use the Horoblin Horrible Smasher to break that as well. Okay. Halfway, halfway. Bra, 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 bra. Go on the light, I dare you. See what happens. Oh, sh she can't. It's a thunderclap. It's gone. Bra! Mama. With it defeated, Riju gains her sacred stone and I get to touch her hand, which was really, really cool. Finally, a woman's touch. We gain access to her sage ability, which comes in quite handy later on. Four of five infinity stones claimed. Let's freaking go, guys. Heading back to Gerudo Town, we complete a couple of side quests in the town and find our way over to the Yiga Clan hideout. Find our three branches and collect the clan attire. Earn your place among us and the door will open to you. Maybe then we'll teach you our moves. Now go away. Okay, let's see if we have all the clan attire. Okay, we don't have the Yiga pants. We need the Yiga pants. Well, I didn't go up there last time, so I'm going to assume the pants are up here. Aha! Pants! Mm, Alright, come in. Open up. Infiltrating the Yiga clan. The brand new gear. I'd heard talk of potential new member. I take it that's you. I can hardly believe how quick you managed to visit all three branches. Impressive to say the least. Making it inside the hideout disguised as a Yiga assassin, I was somehow scammed by two separate members for a spike and a vehicle which I thought was going to be a schematic but was actually just the vehicle itself. Wait, why did he... Did I really pay $100 to just be sent out of the hideout. Okay, well that's pointless. Fortunately though, my time spent in here was still worth it. After completing a combat trial, we gain access to the hidden earthquake technique, which means anytime we don't have a weapon equipped and charge attack, we use the Yiga technique to cause an earth spike to attack the enemy. We began the next day completing a shrine and jumping down into the pit Koga fell into back in Breath of the Wild. We search around here for a day conquering an underground Yiga base. Hey man, what's up? I'm a new Yiga member. Are you having fun on this boat? Um... Sneak attack! Bra! Never saw it coming. What an idiot. And by the end of the day, I was back on the surface and heading towards a battle platform in the sky. I had no clue what awaited me here, but turns out it was just yet another King Gliok. Oh! Yeah, you're not getting away this time, idiot! Let's go! Chesticle, chesticle, what is in the chesticle today? In the chesticle is the sage's will. Called it! Let's go! By the following morning though, I had bested it and claimed yet another Sage's Will which was enough to upgrade another Sage's power. Following on from this, I was told about the Gliding Suit which would increase our airborne movement speed, which I thought was super cool and turns out all I had to do was beat those dive trials again and talk to the steward construct. So after crushing the record at every single dive spot, your boy is kind of a professional diver at this point, I walked away at the end of the day with the full Glide Suit. The following two days I spent all my time in shrines going from one to the next crushing them out before hating in a bunch of blessings and upgrading Riju's sage power while increasing our hearts even more. And what better way to end our day than by cooking up a storm, baby. This the lamp Where's the lamp the, lamp the following morning I found some more Korok proof and was told about a secret Colosseum underneath the Colosseum on the land. So off I went to find it. And look what we have to fight. Oh, oh, a Lionel? Oh my lord, wait, what? Okay, okay, this is happening, hang on. Let me, what the hell? Yeah, chill, daddy. Daddy, chill. What the hell is even that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. Good stuff, good stuff. Yeah, back up, back up, idiot. Okay, 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 chill, chill. Okay, well, at least we get parts for it, right? Oh, no, now we gotta go to a blue Lionel! 
What the heck? Oh, we're fucked. Defeat the last Lionel and fuse the silver Lionel horn with your master sword. All right, done. Deal. Got it. Will do. Wait, is this the final one? Or is there one after this as well? Oh my lord, oh my lord, I'm stressing. Uh. Oh! Yeah, idiot, dummy. Dummy idiot. Okay, Octorok eyeball. Go! Oh, big, 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 massive. Let's go. Big dodge, big dodge, big dodge. Come on, guys, hit him! How about no? Ah! Okay, we eat. Time to eat. Things are progressing as I intended them to. I don't know what you got, you guys are worrying about. This was all intended gameplay. Okay, I got the fire rush. We got the fire. How are you even getting here? Lionels are easy. Shut up, man! I I got him. I got him. It's the weapon. It's the weapon. I okay. Wait, there's two more left. Are you joking? Okay. Oh my lord. Oh my lord. How's this dude not dead yet? Oh, far out. Wait, there's another one? Why is there more? Silver Lionel Saberhorn. Holy shit. Okay, that looks really good, actually. Why is he covered in armor? Oh my lord. We have no way to get our gloom health back. We just have to... We have to do this perfectly, effectively. Okay. Ooh, hang on. Your boys just had an idea. Aha! Alright, let's try that again. So close! I guess I could launch an ancient arrow, ancient arrow at it. What? So, unlike Ancient Arrows in the first game, these arrows actually one-shot anything they hit, but as a penalty, you don't get the loot from the mob you kill. I sort of felt a little cheap doing it this way, and I had no idea that this was an actual feature of that arrow, so I decided to go back and do this legit. Well, I had a semi-legit plan to defeat the Lionel, including creating a demon mech monster with cannons and lasers to hopefully take him out that way, but, uh... You'll see how that goes. I know how this looks, right? It doesn't look great, but I'm sure it'll work. Okay? Oh yeah, look at this thing! Okay, it works, kind of. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, this will this will do the job, right? Right, guys? Look at him. He's a marvel. He's a marvel, this, this guy is. Whatever I'm missing. He's coming, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. Shit. Just build it, just build it, just build it, just build it! He just destroyed it all in an instant! Okay, well, I would say that is a, that was a, a very good plan. Time for plan B, I'd say, and that involves fusing a rocket to my shield, flying into the air, entering bullet time, and then spamming bombs at him. Oh, oh, this is the first time we're taking on this Lionel. I'm sure this is gonna go just as I planned it to. Uh... Spin to win, spin to win. Oh, 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 we land the flurry rush. There we go. First time actually landing the flurry rush. We got the master sword out. Come on, let's go. Oh, yes. Okay, we dodge, we dodge, we dodge, we dodge. First go, baby. Let's go. This game is easy. Oh, my lord. There I am in the background. Don't I look so cute over there? And as a reward, we get given. Majora's Mask, a pretty cool item to get. Ending the day, we head over to the Typho Ruins and use all our Sage abilities to complete these dragon puzzles, which unlocks an underground bunker. Inside the bunker though, we find this. Is that the Twilight Princess sword that uh, Zelda uses in Twilight Princess? Uh, apparently it isn't, but I wouldn't know because I haven't played Twilight Princess. For the rest of the day, I went around the map trying to find Zelda dragons so I could shoot her to get the scales to upgrade my champion's tunic. Finally finding her by the end of the day, I find that she actually has shards on her back as well that when fused to a weapon provides healing on hit. Well, let's go do another shrine. What the 
the heck? Why am I naked? What do you mean I need to beat the constructs to get my clothes back? All right, fine. Epic. Easy. Today I headed over to the stables in the south to feed these little dino things. Giving them some luminous stones to chomp on. The cool thing is after a little bit of time and after the stone passes through the internals of the creature, we get to pick up its poop. And it just so happens that this thing poops out all kinds of gems. From Zonite all the way to diamonds. There is way too many references to poop in this game. I mean the Koroks, those statues, and now these things. It's a little bit sus. While waiting for said gem poop though, we explore the underground some more. Stumbling into some weird low roof cave, we get ourselves into another round robin battle showdown. This time with Heroblins. Although this was nothing compared to the Lionel, so we crushed them and claimed Sheik's Mask from Ocarina of Time. But our battles didn't end here. Instead, we found ourselves in a battle with another Phantom Ganon. No! We're not ready for this! Oh. Oh, easy. Easy with the Master Sword. Defeating him earned us another of his gloom weapons and a piece of the wild set armor. I gotta be honest, I don't really like this set at all, and although I may collect it, I have no interest in wearing it. I went back to claim my poop stones today, and then went back down into the depths to explore even more and getting enough crystallized charges to upgrade our batteries substantially. The next day I shot Zelda in the mouth, yeah, that doesn't sound right, but at least she gave me a piece of the Light Dragon's Fang, and we took pictures of the Sky Monuments before equipping the best paraglider skin a man could dream for. Well, unless there's a Pura skin I'm missing. I ended the day by upgrading my Fierce Deity Boots to Max at the Fairy Fountain and figuring out how much more items we actually needed to finish off all the sets that I liked. The following day I explored the depths some more before stumbling upon yet another King Gleok. How many kings are there? Isn't the point of a King Gleok supposed to be that there's only one king? Whatever. By this point though, I've become quite the Gleo killer, so we slay it and claim the cap of Twilight, completing my Twilight Princess set. One of only two Zelda games I have somehow not played. I know, somehow I've played all the GBA games and DS games, and yet somehow I'm missing Twilight Princess? Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see me 100% Twilight Princess. Today I started by completing yet another shrine. Oh, not again. Oh my god, I just got this new set to rock and I'm naked. With another blessing acquired and my gear returned to my body, I went to find Hinoxes to murder for their organs, which can be somehow used to upgrade my gear. That following morning though, something I thought was pretty cool happened. Wait, what the heck? Another star drop? Two star fragments on the one night? That's busted nutty crazy, what the heck? I completed yet another shrine and glided over to find Zelda Dragon to shoot her in the horn this time. We just need one more horn from her and we could fully upgrade the champion's leather. I ended my day shooting another dragon in the mouth and fighting the marbled Goma from the fire temple again. How is it down here and alive? I don't know. With my Gobro though, we launch the Goron Glicky at his leg and spin on him, taking him out. Today I visited the Poop Man to reclaim my broken big Goron Sword and Fierce DD Blade so that I could display them in my house. Look at this display, isn't it beautiful? I reckon today we finally go to Hyrule Castle and take on the Demon King. Well that at least is my plan, but you know, things change. But anyway, let's figure out where we were. Oh, yeah, you guys weren't supposed to see this. That's awkward. Anyway, to probably nobody's surprise, I did not end up fighting Ganon today. Instead, today I found myself fighting yet another King Gleok and getting another Sage's Will. The following day, I went to hand in all my bubble gems to Bill Colton to try and finish the Mystic set. We had enough to get the pants, but needed another 14 more to get the mask. So I decided to go on a bubble hunting spree. This bubble adventure consumed 10 full days of my time, although I did do other things as well. As I went into the desert to find more gems, I ended up starting a quest to become a Yiga Blade Master. It involved me dropping bananas off at frog statues, but while doing so, I did manage to take a Korok up a waterfall on my multi-terrain vehicle. This is all working out quite well. We're knocking out like 60 stones with one bird, as the old saying goes. 
as well as delivering a shrine crystal at the same time. Talk about multitasking on the multi-terrain vehicle, am I right? As I dropped off another banana at a frog statue, I found yet another gem at the top of a mine. Finally, you have returned after making the necessary offerings. My intelligence sources have confirmed it. You passed the Blade Master exam. Let's go! I didn't even have to use any blades to get that, but anyway. You are permitted to step into the Inner Sanctum. The Inner Sanctum was a bit of a letdown though, since I just got some Yiga weapons and access to the shrine. Let's just go for your deity mode. Oh, they found me instantly. Prepare for battle? Oh, we do just get kicked out. That's lame. Yiga clan enforcers! But will they let me back in? These guys have really bad defenses. <laughs> Continuing on my hunt for more gems, I arrived in the actual desert today. We fell inside a sand trap though, but did get rewarded as we found the phantom armor set piece and we also shot a bubble frog for yet another bubble gem. We then competed in a race where the reward was a Gerudo sail cloth, but nothing will be good enough to replace my Hudson cloth. That evening I climbed the desert temple to find nothing and the next day spent the whole day mining in this cave. I mean, look at this. And what did we get for it? Actually, something kind of cool. Wait, what? Vanda Boris's Divine Helm? Not only does it provide us with electric resist, but it also has a secondary effect. As you can now see, Riju wears her Sage Helmet. Shame it doesn't actually upgrade her power or do anything, but it looks cool. Today I went bare naked in the Gerudo town and got thrown in jail. I then attempted to woo a woman in the Vo and Me quest before getting rejected multiple times. Uh. Oh. We just had the drink. Oh, we just... Okay, well evidently this is what I was going to say but the game just explained it for you. You just get him drunk. <laughs> Nintendo, do better. This lady wanted some flowers from Kakariko, so off I went. Where's the child? Open at daybreak, my Oh, Time to visit mother. Is mother dead? Oh, that's sad. Okay, get to work, child. I will murder your father and your sister unless you move to the goddamn wreath stand right now. Move. You won't have just your mother to worry about in a minute. It's a demon! It's a ghost! She's immune to swords! What is this? Oh, you wanna fight? You wanna fight? Shit? You shit? You wanna fight? Yeah! 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 That scared him! That scared him! Go! Go sell! Good! Just what I needed. Good. He did all of that and got... Nothing. Nothing. Zero. Nada. Squat. To end off my day, I went looking for the final three bubble gems we needed for the mask. I found one and completed a shrine before the day came to a close. The following day, I found the final two bubble gems I needed and handed them into Colton and got the final piece. Let's test it out. And this is to go, to go even, even further, further beyond. But what's cool about the armor is it actually has rupee padding, which means instead of taking damage, we actually just lose rupees instead. But I don't know if that's actually worth it. Let's find out. 60? What are you kidding? 60 rupees? That's ridiculous. Screw that. You lost me. With that complete, surely I went to take on the Demon King today. Nope. Actually, I went to Tingle Island and traversed the depths below them, which earned me the cap of the wind. So overall, not worth it. Ending the day though, I did get some more Zono parts for building. And in the morning of day 180, I crushed two more shrines, handed in my eight blessings for two heart containers, and prepared for our adventure in the castle. This was going to be epic. So, heading up to the castle, I run into evil Zelda, who disappears and we get swarmed with monsters. We follow her around the castle, taking on wave after wave of monster forces, and by the end of the day, I finally find her in the center of the castle. Some creepy stuff happens, and it's revealed that it's just a puppet of Ganondorf. What a surprise. Yeah, I'm sure nobody saw that coming. And if you thought one Phantom Ganon was bad, how about five? 
Well, actually, it's not so bad. We managed to take them down with relative ease, and the champions arrive to help me fight. Ganondorf runs away with a little Boko tail between his legs, and it's hinted that we may be able to find a fifth sage? Huh? This is confirmed by Pura the next day, and so we begin our hunt for them. I started my search back in Kakariko Village, as I thought maybe it had something to do with the monument that I wasn't allowed to access before. However, I got slightly put off the trail by this guy who ended up wasting a bunch of my time as I went looking for a bunch of those ancient text pillars in the sky. After a day of hunting for them and assuming this is what I was supposed to do, I hand in all my pictures and get a bunch of rupees. And also a glider skin. Yay. Speaking to Pai though, we convince her to let us explore the ringed ruins, and inside we find a hint as to the location of the fifth sage. Heading to Dracozo Lake, we have to solve a riddle to find this tribal electric garb, which when wearing and presenting a Zonai charge to this table, clears the sky and reveals a hidden sky island. Arriving on the island, we traverse the many gaps and defeat the many enemies awaiting for us. Arriving at the peak towards the end of the day, we reach a door which needs a certain amount of hearts to open. Hopefully I have enough. You don't even need barely any hearts. Correct past me, you don't. Inside we find a mask which directs us to the underground, and flying said mask to the ground we find an underground elevator. The voice inside the mask is directing us to find them as quick as possible so we can talk, but we're already talking, why don't we just talk now? Wait, now they want us to build a robot mech for them? Mmm, a little sus. So I brought part after part to them solving a bunch of puzzles as it's revealed this is a fifth hidden dungeon. On day 187, we fully repaired the mech and we were given yet another task. We must recover my secret stone. Okay, lady, whatever you say. The trail to the secret stone was long and arduous, but we had many ways to enhance our mech. It was a long walk as we took down countless enemies and used plenty of Zonai devices to help us traverse, like this rocket we used on our backpack to fly into this temple as day 189 began. Inside the temple we found the sacred stone finally, but before we could grab it we were interrupted by an old mech that had been taken over by Ganondorf. A little throwback to the Divine Beast Blights in a way, I think. To my disappointment though, it was pretty much just another mech battle like the Koga fight where we had to knock it into the fence. Defeating the construct, we find out it was Minoru, the sage's spirit, who had sacrificed her body and became a spirit to help us on our journey. She was going to awaken earlier and help us at the start of the game, but sadly Ganondorf prevented that. Fortunately though, with her saved and her sacred stone acquired, we get given... The final infinity stone! Let's freaking go! With the fifth sage on side and the final dungeon of the game finished, we can tick that off our objective list. To end my day off though, I defeated another marbled Gomba in the underground and made my way back to the surface. I had however not completed my second goal of upgrading the Fierce Deity set all the way to max and so the grind continued. I completed another shrine today and if I completed a few more, I would have enough to upgrade my hearts one final time. So after exploring the Skyforge, the following day I headed to another shrine. And on day 192, I found the final shrine of the game claiming my final blessing. I found myself back in the depths today and fighting the Lynels in the Colosseum yet again. Not only did I come here for good weapons for crafting, but I also needed Lynel Guts to finish upgrading the Fierce Deity set. And after slaying a bunch more, I took my guts and ran over to the ferry. I've been murdered. The ferry murdered me. And there it is, fully upgraded Fierce Deity Mask. Now you're probably thinking it was time to head to the castle, and you'd be right, but also wrong, as I went well diving today and found a couple more Korok seeds for one final upgrade. The next morning I made my final preparations, made some food, fused some weapons, and had 24 hours of sleep. Kinda makes sense he slept for so long since he pretty much hasn't slept since he woke up almost 200 days ago. I donned my favourite sets today all mixed together as I headed up to Hyrule Castle, and from the peak I jumped into the depths. As I made my way through the depths, I encountered a plethora of enemies ranging from Lizalfos to Lyklax to Lynels, and defeating all of them I continued my descent. 
I came across another Phantom Ganon, which I swiftly defeated. Oh, we land the Flow Rush. Where's our Flow Rush increased damage weapon? Should I be using it now? Probably not, but let's just see how much damage it does. Insane? Okay. Oh, yo. This is where we were at the very start. That's the torch we dropped at the start. Oh, yo, hang on a minute. Let's go. And with the help of the sages, it was time to take on Ganondorf's forces. Let's go! The Demon King's army. Okay, we are not wasting the Master Sword this early. There's so many enemies. Yeah, you on fire now. Now what, idiot? Oh, now we're going into Lazalfos. Okay, I can see what's happening here. We're going to go through waves. I'm down for it, though. All right, we're getting on the back, baby. Cannon, go! Water attack! Go! Go, you know -bo. Perfect. We launched him away and then we... That gloom. It means but one thing. The Demon King is there. Huh? Whoa! It's all the old bosses! But I guess we can't. And with them locked out, we had no choice but to press on by ourselves. Here we go. This world should be shrouded in darkness, not bathed in insufferable light. A king's revival. And the birth of his new world. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Oh my god, we're doing the same damage. But we land the flurry rush. Okay. Yeah, you. Idiot. There we go! <laughs> he flurry rushed me! What the hell? It's okay, it's okay, he's weak, he's weak. Yeah, not now. <laughs> I am not even near. Alright, bro. Oh! Okay. Puppets! Sorry, keep your right you there. Wait, Tullin's here! <laughs> Wait, Tullin's- Oh, they're all here! You 
You don't have your proper sword yet. Where's Girahim? Oh, let's go then. They're all knocked out. Let's go! Get parry! Does the backflip. Comes in, parry! Let's go! Is that it? from Breath of the Wild. The Ganon circling the castle in Breath of the Wild. What? That's a sick throwback. The Demon Dragon. <laughs> We're in the mouth. Freaking comes! Let's go! Yo! Go! What the? We now had but one goal, and that was to destroy the Demon Dragon. And to do that, we needed to take out the four weak points on its back. So as Zelda flew me high into the sky, I could jump from weak point to weak point, slowly taking him down. I think we're nearly done. But there's got to be one more place we haven't hit. And it's on the head, I see it. I see it. Zelda, come get me. Zelda, get me. Okay, good. The Blood Moon! I'm coming for that head, baby! Ooh, the Dodgers! And with two final swings of the Master Sword, we break the casing and are able to climb on top of the stone and land the final finishing blow. 
And with that, we've accomplished every single goal I set out to achieve on my 100 days. And in a twist of fate, Zelda is miraculously turned back into a human, and it's this time that we finally catch her. If you guys enjoyed the video, please consider hitting like on it, sharing it with a friend, and even subscribing to the channel if you're not already. It would mean the world, and I'm sure there'll be more Zelda content coming in the future. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Wait, Link, you can't be doing that anymore, man. What the heck?